Welcome to our review on energy and temperature. So the first thing we're going to do is have a look and see what temperature actually is. So when we're talking about the temperature, we're talking about how hot or cold something is. And the way that we can work that out is by measuring it with a thermometer or a temperature sensor. When we actually come to write about temperature, we'll be using one of two units, either degrees Celsius or Kelvin, which is given the symbol of a capital K. And what the temperature is actually telling us is it's giving us information about the average kinetic energy of those particles. So the hotter something is, the more average kinetic energy the particles have amongst them. We may also talk about energy in a thermal store or thermal energy or heat energy. Now, because it's energy, that does mean it's going to be measured in joules, which has the symbol of a capital J. And what we find is that the energy in the thermal store depends upon the arrangement of the particles and how fast they are moving. So when we actually have an object and we heat it, then what we could see are one of three things or a combination of them. Firstly, we could see a change in the energy stored in the system to increase the temperature. Secondly, we could get a change of state, so solid to liquid, liquid to gas, etc. And we could see chemical reactions occurring. What we mentioned there are two different types of change that we could see, physical changes and chemical changes. So a physical change is a change of state. So solid to liquid or liquid to gas or dissolving, all of those are physical changes. What we have as a characteristic of these is that we're not making a new substance. If we started off with a block of ice that's made of H2O, and then if we melt it into water, it's still H2O. So we're not making a new substance here at all. And what we find is that these physical changes are usually reversible. So if we've melted ice, we can then refreeze it back into ice. A chemical change is one that's going to involve a chemical reaction. And what we see in a chemical change is that the atoms within those original reactants become rearranged to make new products. So we're making a new substance. It's one of the key characteristics of our chemical change there. What we also find is that chemical changes are usually irreversible. So once you've undergone a chemical change, it's not likely that you can change it back. Obviously, there are certain times that we can, but usually they're irreversible. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can describe the difference between temperature and energy. You can recall the units they're measured in and, of course, how we can measure temperature. You can describe what happens when you heat things up and also describe the difference between a physical change and a chemical change.